Good morning. So hope everyone had a refreshing chai break. So my session is on advanced persistent thread groups uh, as they have been uh, like increasingly being uh, seen common and being uh, targeted on a very wide range of organizations. They pose a serious uh, threat to our national security. So we'll uh, look into two such uh, thread groups and uh, see their analysis. So I'm Satvik from uh, Quick Hill, uh, working as a security researcher at uh, Securite Labs. So uh, I'm basically working on hunting such APT groups and, at also, uh, and also at the same time working on a little bit of dark web research. I previously worked at uh, CDAC Hyderabad uh, with the cyber security team too. So uh, first we'll be looking uh, today at what are uh, these APT groups and uh, what is their motivation, why they are targeting uh, our Indian defense sector. We'll look at uh, the different infection chains they are using to lure such victims and uh, we'll see a specific arsenal and how they are uh, evading detection. So advanced persistent threat or APT groups are uh, nation state sponsored groups. So they do specific uh, reconnaissance on uh, their target. They even penetrate their network and uh, stay for few days or even many weeks so that uh, they can persistently stay in their network. And uh, since they are nation state sponsored, they are very well funded and highly skilled. The malware they develop is uh, sophisticated and uh, stealthy at the same time. So uh, in order to, you know, uh, not being uh, risked by these such uh, APT groups, we need to understand such threats from uh, uh, being uh, compromised. So the two uh, APT groups that we are uh, going to look today are uh, Pakistan aligned. So these are transparent tribe and a side copy group. So transparent tribe also known as APT 36 uh, has been active uh, since long back since 2013. So their targets uh, are our new, uh, Indian government and uh, nearby countries like Afghanistan and Bangladesh states. And their sector uh, target has been specifically government sector. But uh, recently since last year, uh, we have seen that they are targeting university students, that is the education sector. Their arsenal comprises uh, mostly of remote access Trojans for uh, windows like Crimson and Oblique Rat. But they have also started targeting other platforms, like they are using uh, Capra Rat for uh, Android, uh, based platforms and uh, since uh, like many government institutions are uh, trying to change towards Linux platform, they have even started to develop uh, malware for uh, Linux like Poseidon. So coming to uh, site copy APT, so this was uh, like seen uh, recently few years back since 2019 but the interesting thing is they are actually a subdivision of this APT 36 that is transparent tribe. And uh, so their targets overlap with this uh, group, that is the Indian and Afghanistan countries. But the sector, if we see, they are specifically targeting the defense sector. And uh, the arsenal is mostly windows comprised rats like action, reverse and more. So in this session, we'll look uh, specifically on action rat and how they have uh, evaded these detections. So firstly, we'll see like what are their targets, what different teams they have uh, used. So uh, in 2023, in March, if you see that they were using Luring document that is related to the missile clean program targeting defense entity. In April, there is another document uh, related to our defense ministry with the medical delegation theme. But if you see that the document is from March 2023, but we have seen this in April 23. So immediately they are uh, like able to get hands on these documents and deploying the, them in their uh, upcoming infection attack chains. In May, we can see that they are using a defense product team, which is a list uh, for procurement. And again in May, we have seen an advisory related to entities of defense like uh, Indian Army. And then there, there are more such uh, themes we have seen uh, throughout these years, like in June uh, with selection of officers document. But in an interesting twist, in July we have seen uh, targeting of an other ministry apart from the defense sector. So mostly it comprises of 70 to 80 percent targeting of defense sector. So these are the various streams. Coming to the infection chain of side copy. So how, the, how they are able to uh, attack these victims and uh, penetrate into their networks. So we'll just see a brief overview and not go uh, much into the technical details. 
So they initially do recon of the targets, collect all the email addresses from uh, dark web or uh, do OSINT on these organizations and collect the email addresses. And then they send phishing emails. So the phishing email may contain uh, like a malicious attachment or some phishing links, clicking on which it actually downloads this zip file. And this zip file contains a Windows uh, shortcut file. So it seems that it is very uh, genuine in nature, but it is uh, like in the form of a double extension format. Though it is a shortcut file, it appears to be as a PPT file with the theme that we have seen. So once this uh, shortcut file has been clicked, it executes a remote file present on uh, the attacker's domain. And it uh, contains two embedded files. So one is it opens the decoy file that we have seen earlier and it loads malicious library files. But these are not dropped on the victim's system and they are directly run, on the, run in the memory, thereby uh, evading all the detections. And uh, I'll not go much into the depth into this complicated chain because as you know, these are state-sponsored groups. So ultimately, they drop the action rat. This rat communicates with a C2 and also at the same time maintains a persistence mechanism. So even after the reboot or uh, like it gets shut down, uh, the malware persists. So this was the infection chain we have seen uh, in March this year. But at the same time, we have seen some changes discovered in May of this month. So instead of using a single infection chain, they have used three infection chains. So they have used like uh, a document file, image file, PDF file. And uh, the image file they have been using here is a honey trap theme related. So these uh, both groups have been actually using this honey trap related lures since many years. And they also seen like success infection rate for this. So after loading, the main change we have seen is that the action rate that was dropped was not showing any behavior. So this complete infection chain is same since 2019. But the new change we observed is that after some reconnaissance, it's, uh, it downloads an other bigger version of the action rate payload. So we have called this a double action rat. And it is like exactly double in size and having more additional features. So we'll look at what are the differences. So starting with the malicious shortcut files. So the three uh, documents we have seen earlier are the properties shown here. So if you see that the comment uh, here is uh, my, my personal pics. So showing that it is uh, a honey trap related theme and the actual target is triggering a remote uh, code present on the domain. So this is triggered using uh, the default Microsoft HTA process. But uh, like, to all these uh, shortcut files, there is an interesting artifact that is associated. So the desktop name uh, or the machine ID is same for all these documents. So if we hunt for this specific artifact, we found that there are similar campaigns targeting with themes like management principles and practices. We even saw targeting of uh, themes related to violence against women during the Women's Day. Then other themes like types of software and survey. So using these interesting specific artifacts, we can actually uh, profile these threat actors and get an idea of their arsenal and their ongoing campaigns. So this was the script that we saw in March. So the important thing is, if you see that uh, all the strings are easily in readable format, it is doing some uh, checking the folder if it's present or not, and later it decodes uh, whatever embedded files are there. And we can see that uh, the actual payload is dynamically invoked in memory. And lastly, it is opening the uh, decoy file. So this was seen in March. But the changes that we saw in uh, May is that it is initially similarly checking the .NET version so that you can check that what version to be installed. But interestingly, all the readable strings are here obfuscated in this modified version. So an additional layer of uh, encoding is done here to evade detections. And an extra thing is it is also trying to fetch the antivirus solution installed using an SQL query. And at last, it again opens all the decoy documents. So all are shown here uh, uh, at once just for an uh, information. So the domain hosting payloads, we have seen that the domain is a legitimate one. 
but at the same time this threat actors are modifying the login page so if you see that initially it had a, a normal image but later it was immediately changed to a login page though it was not alive at the moment we can see that they are uh, evolving uh, their phishing mechanisms to capture all the credential information at the same time and coming to the embedded library files the changes that we have seen is a uh, very minimal but it had uh, added controls like a shutdown mechanism you know play some audio or do screenshot recording so these are this is a dot net library file that was loaded so how it is uh, how this specific library is uh, evading antivirus so first it checks that what antivirus solution is present on the system so it had a, a predefined list for checking these solutions so first if kaspersky is present the actual malware or the rat payload is triggered using powershell and in order to maintain persistence the startup directory is used but this is same uh, persistence mechanism was seen used uh, with avs like securite and quickheal but if there are any other avs apart from these three like avast avira bit defender windows defender they are using another mechanism like instead of directly dropping the payloads they use uh, jpg files and then rename them and instead of startup persistence they are using registry key persistence in order to evade detections so by understanding how it behaves for each antivirus we can uh, provide more protection from an organization's perspective so we have also seen a new rat uh, that was embedded into this specific dll so we have seen lots of features uh, and they are uh, having like empty methods or are still under development it had completely new uh, set of commands 18 commands so that it can communicate with the command and control server that is the c2 so it can get uh, the basic information like os information uh, what version is uh, installed what av version machine name username it can also list different uh, logical drives uh, what files are present do various file operations at the same time it can even play audio and uh, take a screenshot or video record and send them to uh, the c2 of the threat actor so the initial command that we have seen is try to get the system information of the victim from the system coming to the actual uh, action rat payload so this is using a very old uh, delphi uh, based programming language and this is not and this, since this is a library it cannot be loaded uh, directly so what it does is it uses the legitimate windows credential manager application present in the windows directory and when this uh, manager is triggered it searches uh, if any library is present with a specific name because that is its uh, default behavior and since a malicious payload with that specific name is present this action rat gets loaded so what this action rat does is it didn't uh, show any specific uh, behavior initially but the features that we found after analysis are like it can download malicious payloads from uh, the c2 of the threat actor execute any commands and send basic system information so it uses like http requests to get user details and command details the first sample that we found this year uh, in this infection chain for action rat in uh, in march had only like two or like very few detections because it was not showing any behavioral analysis and it evaded all the static detections successfully so what communication is it with uh, is it doing with the c2 so the new changes that we observed in this uh, the second chain that we saw are first it receives uh, a command that no upload file it means that no uh, behavior is seen but it is just constantly receiving this but after some time uh, we saw a new stage 3 script which is actually sending a htf file so this is the new discovery that we found which is similar but it is actually loading the bigger version of the action rat which was never before seen and this is being tri triggered using powershell because powershell can directly execute these scripts again uh, the microsoft hta application that we saw is executing this hta script so what is this uh, new stage h3a so we have seen that uh, in the, the second stage in may it is actually obfuscating uh, all the encoded strings and similarly this stage 3 also this does the same thing and finally loads the payload but immediately we saw that this stage 3 was not the final one it deleted this stage 3 payload and again downloaded 
another one and if you can see that here most of the variables or the strings are clearly visible like final module uploader load all main run second module indicating that this is like the final stage uh, which was seen in may of this year so the double action rat that we saw is exactly double in size so the first one is uh, around 221 kb but the second one was around 437 kb so it is almost double in size and had an uh, extra features that we saw so what is that so initially it uh, does enumeration uh, based on what uh, file uh, type is, is present so it enumerates through all our uh, folders like desktop document and uh, whatever is present in the downloads folder and it checks it, ch it checks for specific file types like if any uh, PDF files or document or XLS files are present because those are the important documents like they may be confidential documents or any uh, you know typical government uh, secret documents which they want uh, to get hands on. So they will leave completely uh, other uh, file types like exe applications or any script files files. So what information it collects is it checks for all these documents when uh, the document has been created, what is the last written time what is the size of it. So it captures all this information and stores in the temp directory. So this is for document files. At the same time it also checks what archive files are present. So all these information are stored uh, along with the timestamp and sent to the threat actor. So the threat actor then goes through uh, all these specific files, sees that if any interesting name is present in these documents and then sends another command to fetch all these documents. So the theme documents that we have seen are actually uh, either you know confidential documents or they uh, use them in the upcoming attack chains. So how did we attribute all these attacks to a site copy APT? So apart from their uh, similar infection chain seen throughout the years and the action rate payload, their uh, C2 server is always uh, registered to Contabo server. So this is how we can say that uh, all these infection chains are from site copy and if we look at the specific uh, debugging path for these uh, payloads they have a common name like packers cyberlink latest source multi-threaded protocol architecture but after that everything is different but using these artifacts like machine id pdb paths it gives us a higher confidence to attribute to these threat actors so this is how you know uh, gaining a initial knowledge before the attack is happening we can actually have a protection from the organization based perspective. Coming to uh, our transparent tribe or APT 36. So what all themes that we saw targeting the government sector this time? You can see that in uh, April of uh, this year it uses uh, officers based revised policy. So this is a PPT file this time instead of uh, the typical docx we saw in uh, site copy. In May, there is an another PPT file which uh, like says a list of the export of defense products, again showing the targeting of defense sector. And then later in June, we saw that it is targeting uh, army battalion CRPF. Though this was an old document, this was used uh, in the recent campaign. So coming to the infection chain, so this infection in chain is very basic compared to site copy. As we saw like, uh, this also uses a phishing email, but this time it contains a malicious uh, PPAM file. So this is a present, uh, this is a presentation file which has an uh, additional add-on features. So what we can do is, it, we, uh, the threat actor embeds all the malicious files into this document, and so that uh, at the time of execution, these uh, embedded uh, malicious files can be extracted using a VBA macros. So at the same time, uh, the decoy file is also embedded. So once this uh, PPT is opened and uh, macros are enabled so that it lures the victim, it opens the decoy file in the foreground and in the background it extracts all these malicious uh, files like the crimson rat and communicates with the C2 which is done everything in the background. So what is macro code? So a VBA or visual basic script uh, can be actually uh, written so that we can automate uh, the presentations done. So it is using this to uh, create malicious code. So just an overview is that uh, it drops all these payloads in the program data directory and that too with a variable name depending upon the current uh, timestamp. So that each time it creates a different file. And at the same time it extracts all these malicious files like the crimson rat 
and at the end it opens the decoy file that is the ppt file so this is just the uh, overview of the macro code so what does the uh, final crimson rat do this crimson rat is also similar to the previous rat that we have seen so all the features are similar but it had uh, completely uh, 22 commands for c2 communication so the new thing we observed is that instead of uh, using the typical persistence mechanism uh, separately, it had used a specific command called the put SRT so that it can issue this command to uh, maintain persistence multiple times. And it can also connect, uh, reconnect to the actual C2 of the threat actor. So coming to the PDB paths, the PDB path the file has, like it contains very random names. So no specific uh, like open source tool is associated currently, but this randomness uh, can actually uh, allow us to attribute this crimson rat. What is the C2 infrastructure they have using? So in all the C2, uh, the IPs that we have observed uh, using tools like uh, Shodan and uh, uh, Netscape, uh, we can see that uh, the, there is a common target name or the computer name, which is similar through all their protocols and they are using a specific uh, you know rdp server that is keeping the port uh, 3389 open so that they can communicate uh, to the victim's server and send commands using this at the same time uh, not only targeting uh, various defense entities but uh, this uh, since last year we have seen that it is also targeting uh, university students to get information of uh, students so what are the themes that is used is that in last year we have seen uh, they are using a theme related to uh, IIT Hyderabad. So they are using some themes related to uh, assignment questions so that the students get lured into clicking on these malicious documents. In February we have seen it as uh, it has like shifted targeting other uh, universities like NIT. In March we saw it was targeting business schools using financial accounting theme. In June again we saw uh, private universities are also being uh, you know targeted with this specific team and it is still continuing daily uh, as we see that they are trying to gather a uh, student information so that they can sell this information to maybe some uh, you know uh, opposition uh, uh, opposition uh, like groups like any terror groups aligned to that threat actor so it is like uh, very important to make sure that uh, these new documents are not clicked so these are the telemetry spikes that we have seen so since uh, Q4 2022, it has started this specific campaign. And this year in uh, February, we, it has uh, peaked targeting these university students. Though it has reduced a uh, bit, we still see that this is uh, still prevalent uh, currently. So uh, thank you all. I know this might be a bit uh, technical, but uh, hope you uh, like understood the gravity of the situation and uh, how advanced persistent threat uh, actors can uh, impact uh, critical uh, organizations and sabotage all the business operations. So for more details, you can uh, check our uh, recent blogs and white papers uh, on our Securite and uh, Quick Heal websites. Thank you.